Well, thank you, Kim. Welcome everybody. And thank you for attending this evening. My name is Nancy Trimble, the current chair of the Durham Region Branch. And our meetings are open to everyone. If you know anyone who's interested in genealogy, please let them know about us. This will be a, our agenda for tonight. Uh, we'll do a, just a few brief announcements and reports. Um, then we will get to Leslie Anderson's presentation, our main presentation for the evening. After Leslie uh, finishes the, her question and answer, then we'll, I've got a little mini presentation um, to uh, show if there's time. Uh, and then we'll get to upcoming meetings and some other news items. And at the very end, if we still got time, we'll open up, we'll have an open chat for those who wish to stay for that. So, um, he notices hereby given of the branch's annual general meeting for the purpose of receiving reports and conducting our annual elections. It will be at the beginning of our November meeting. So who wants to get on board with us? We're a wonderful crew, come and join us. Most positions on the council are available if you are interested, especially to bring relief to those current members who are wearing several hats, and I'm not gonna name any names right now. If you want to talk to me or our past chair, Stephen, about this, please send an email to the Durham uh, at ogs.on.ca, marked elections, and uh, we'll answer any questions you might have. Uh, Steve is the nominations committee chair, and uh, either he or I will, uh, talk to you about it. Remember, in here in our branch, you can nominate yourself, so send that in the same fashion. And we will also take nominations for the floor, from the floor, but that nominee must be present and must accept the nomination. So these are the mandated elected positions, but we also have volunteers in other roles. And I'd like to put in an invitation to put your spare time to great advantage for us and for the genealogical world. We have several opportunities and I am sure that something will fit your talents. Training is available and we can do Zoom calls to explain the different roles if you want to find out more about it. In particular, we've got a transcription opportunity right now. So it's for Tony, that's the, the Ontario Name Index, which is a province-wide initiative. And our local uh, Tony coordinator, Stacy, is looking for transcribers um, to index the 1861 to remain maps of Durham region. You can, this is a very small uh, picture of one of the maps of Darlington Township. Uh, I don't know if you can quite tell, but there are the lot owner names written on each lot, and that's what we want to index. So um, we have just sent out our uh, summer kindred spirits. So Anne, it, our layout editor, is looking for articles for our next newsletter. And articles from members are the key to having an interesting newsletter. So do you have a Durham Region story or a source or a methodology to share a great website? Maybe you've got a, just a tiny little interesting snippet or a tiny find, or maybe you made a genealogy breakthrough. Consider writing that up for our newsletter and sending it in. And kudos to Anne for hanging in there and keeping our newsletter going. Now, just a couple of Zoom hints. Many of you are pros now, I know, but for any newcomers, here's where you click on the speech bubble to see and post in the chat area. And in the chat area at the very bottom, there is a... Um, Oops, there is a, a, a blue box 
where you can click and names will show up, the hosts and co-hosts. So if you have tech problems, you want to click and send your uh, problem to Ontario Ancestors. And if you have uh, questions or comments for the speaker, there will be a, um, a co-host called Questions. Uh, I haven't changed the name over just yet, but it will be me. So at the very end of her presentation is when we are going to uh, do the question and answer session. So now we're gonna move on to our fe featured presentation. Before I start I'd like my presentation, the mini presentation, I have to give you some context here. So under news, just recently announced, um, we got this really exciting uh, post from Family Search. They have completed digitizing all of the millions of microfilm rolls that they have. So you can imagine how much of the world's records this puts at our fingertips now. Uh, they began transferring the microfilm to digital in 1998. At that time, they estimated the project would take 50 years. And they've come in 27 years early. <laughs> and that's because uh, they developed better technology and processes, and that's what shortened their timeline. But as a side note, that doesn't mean that it's all been indexed. So many of the unindexed digital records are there on the website, but they have to be searched manually. And I'd also make a suggestion that if you want more indexes, let's get out there and volunteer for the family search indexing, indexing projects. So moving on to my mini presentation, this is what I'm going to talk about, how to find unindexed records at family search. So did you know that around 70% of the data on family search is unindexed? I mean, that's how far behind they are on the indexing. So these, uh, these people cannot be found by using a search field and entering a name. It just won't work. They have to be searched manually, frame by frame, just like the old days when we had to scroll through microfilms at the libraries and archives. At that point, if you were really lucky, the original clerk put some index pages at the beginning or the end of the volume, or maybe someone indexed a record set and sold it as a publication as many of the OGS branches did on the, old, on the censuses and the cadastral maps and uh, church records, et cetera. And just as an aside, I'd like to mention there was an advantage to scrolling microfilm, or in this case now, scrolling the images, because you get really good at reading the writing, the handwriting, and you get to know the place and the people in it. And sometimes you make some pretty good serendipitous finds. So the best, most complete way to access all the collections on Family Search is from the Family Search catalog. So what you need to do, I'm trying to get to my laser pointer. Can, can you see my cursor? Yes, we can see your cursor. It's not a laser pointer, but we see your cursor. Oh, that's good. At least you can see something. So when you sign in on Family Search, one of the key things to do is to make sure you have one of the free accounts set up and always uh, join through that account because you get more details. So you click on search, then you click on catalog, and you're going to end up with this particular form. Start typing in, and we're going to search by place. There are other ways to search, but we only have time tonight just to touch on, on the place one. So start typing whatever, and you will get a list, a drop down list of standardized places. Now you need to click on the standardized place. That's your key to get into the catalog. So here I started typing Ontario, and 
I meant, meant Ontario County, the old Ontario County. So I'm going to click on the second one, which is Canada, Ontario, Ontario. That's what it stands for. Nation, province, county. Now, when I do that, it comes up with a list of record categories. So I chose um, the, um, well, before I get into the record category that I chose to demonstrate, at the top of the list, there is a clickable link where you can go in and see the next jurisdiction down. So from the county level, this would take you to a list of villages and townships and uh, cities and towns. Uh, so you can actually drill down even further. And it'd be a good idea to, to definitely look at all the jurisdictional levels. So I went to church records and you can see it had seven items in it. So when I went here, uh, I'm showing you the top three items under church records. Tried the top one, but that just led to a book that has not been digitized. And, and on a side note, they all they mentioned was the microfilm has been digitized. So there are books being done, but certainly they haven't finished them. And there's definitely microfiche out there still to be done. In the second item though, um, we're going to click through, click through to the description page. It's the Hicks site registry of births and deaths for the Young Street monthly meeting. Hicks sites were a uh, spin-off branch of the Quaker uh, faith. So we're going to get to the, the um, description page. It's going to give you stuff here. It's going to give you a little bit of notes that the Ontario Archives have put in this because this is from the Archives of Ontario. But you want to scroll down to the very bottom. And when you get to the bottom, you're going to get to film and digital notes. I had to split this into two uh, sections. It's actually one long thing across the bottom. And you'll notice the format has a camera there. But it does not have the, micro, uh, the magnifying glass. That means there's not a, an index. This is a browsable collection. It's a collection of everything that's on this film number. And our particular one is item number five. So when you get to this section on the, uh, the film and digital notes, there are four possible types of uh, combinations of icons that you'll get. The magnifying glass and camera means that it's digital and it's indexed. Now that may mean it's only partially indexed and it's a little hard to figure out how to do that, how to find out if it's fully indexed or partially indexed. But if you don't find your person and you think they should be there, then you're going to have to start to browse. The camera is browsable. The camera with the key means that there's special conditions and you would have to go to a family history center or an affiliate library. The affiliates in Durham region are the Whitby Main Library branch, the Oshawa Main Library in the local history room, and as far as I know, that's still closed and the Uxbridge Library in the genealogy room, which is open by appointment only right now. So before you go, make sure you call and find out if you're gonna be able to get access to the uh, Family History Library portal on the computers. And the last icon is a microfilm reel. In other words, it hasn't been um, loaded up yet, even if it has probably been digitized. So this is what you will see when you click on the camera icon. You get film strips. And, and leave it at this um, in this format for a minute. Up here, you'll notice there are over a thousand images in this particular data set. 
and you can use the arrows to go back and forth and you can even just type in a number and jump through co the collection. Even at this level, I can read this particular image and it says it's a church records collection. That's the title of some of these items at the Ontario Archives. That's an internal titling. So what you want to do, the first slides are administrative. You can ignore them. But start kind of rolling through these images in this film strip format and look for um, a view that looks like it's a title page. So once you find the title page, <clears throat> then uh, you will double click on it and you get a full screen. Now for films with multiple items, and this is just an extra little tip, click on any of the beginning images and then on information and it will give you a scrollable list of the items on the whole microfilm reel. And that's really handy. Once they actually get digitized uh, indexing done, they'll probably split the reel out into separate data sets and the information will give you the people's names. But for now, we get the titles of the items. So when I found something that looked like a title page, um, I found this one and double clicked on it. And you want to check at the beginning and the end of that particular item or volume to see if someone in the past has actually made a handwritten index. This one didn't have one, but it's a pretty short, uh, it's only about 37 pages in this particular item number five. The title at the bottom here and the number of number 30, that's from the Ontario Archives. It's nothing to do with family search. That's how they did their filming and refers to internal numbering system. The first few pages were typewritten, but then uh, I've picked one here that is handwritten. Lovely columns, handwriting's mm, not quite as great, but not horrible. The column headings are children, born, parents, and residents. And typically for the Quakers, they are recorded in family groups. Taylor, Plater, Armitage, Siddons. And Siddons, this is for you, Steve. You can see if they, they belong to your family. Um, if the pages are numbered, keep an eye to see if the pages were filmed in the correct order, or if pages have been deleted, or pages have been, been inserted. As in this case, we've got 29A, and so this was obviously inserted and they obviously needed to add more family groups here. The next page, uh, you wanna check pages before and after. Well, the next page, the headings are different. Now this would be the page that originally faced across from 29. So this actually shows that there is meant to be a two page spread for the record. The titles uh, here are deceased, when, age, parents, and residents. So if you look at little Abraham Plater down here at the bottom, on page 29, he was born the 14th day of the third month in 1839. And here it's recording that he died on the fifth day of the sixth month, 1839 not even three months old. He's a child of Watson and Mary Ann Plater, and they lived in Whitchurch. And in the next item on the microfilm, number six, I just scrolled over because I liked the title. It's the Military Register of Baptisms for the Station of Fort George, Upper Canada, 1821 to 1827. And this will be really great when they finally get it indexed because, of course, this is an era when it's hard to find birth registrations, birth dates. 
So when I was scrolling through, this one caught my eye. It had an asterisk with an extra note at the bottom. And then I started reading. And to my surprise, first, this child ended up with three first names. But look here, his parents were Sir Peregrine and Lady Sarah, Maitland, Lieutenant Governor and Major General. Wow. And then when you looked at the bottom, you get that he's received in the church and his sponsors were Charles, the Duke of Richmond, Brownlow Bertie Matthew Esquire and Lady Mary Fitzroy. We're talking high level, level people here. Pretty awesome. Well, I had to go to Wikipedia and look up Lieutenant Governor Sir Peregrine Maitland and find out what his family connections were and how did he end up with these sponsors for his son? Well, Sir Peregrine was a Lieutenant Governor of Upper Canada from 1818 to 1828, which is definitely in this time frame of 1823 for the baptism. Lady Sarah was born Lennox. He, she was his second wife and was the daughter of the fourth Duke of Richmond. And Charles was the fifth Duke of Richmond. So he was her brother. And Lady Mary Fitzroy was her sister. And Brownlow Bertie Matthew was Peregrine's maternal uncle. Now, to sum up this little talk, um, there are other ways to find unindexed records and family search, but apparently this is the one that gets the most complete listing of data sets. And I do have a handout. Uh, we'll put it in the chat, or maybe uh, Kim has done that for me. And there are uh, some webinars as a resource at the bottom where you can get far more details than what I got into. So I'm gonna continue on with uh, just a few announcements. Uh, the Grow Our Family campaign for Ontario Ancestors is back starting November 1st. If you haven't been a member of Ontario Ancestors for the last two years, then you need to find a sponsoring current member and you will both receive 50% discount on your next year's worth of membership. If you renew in November, your name will also be entered in an early bird draw. So if you're interested in joining, uh, send your names to me at durhamchair at ogs.on.ca if you are looking to join in November and need a sponsor, I've got some names already on a list and I will hook you up with someone. Family Search announced that Roots Tech Connect 2022 is going to take place on the 3rd to the 5th of March as a fully virtual family history event. In 2021, they had over 1 million visitors from over 240 countries, making it the largest in the history of Word Roots Tech. So they're gonna build on that success and it's gonna be identical. It's gonna be completely virtual and completely free. And sometime in October, they're going to open up the registration. So go ahead, it, it's well worth it. Kim is a very busy woman, as you can see by the list of all the webinars for OGS and its branches. This is the October list. It's on, uh, the, it was in the latest eWeekly newsletter, which I hope you've signed up for. Uh, front page of the Ontario Ancestors website. And it's also on the events page of the Ontario Ancestors website. And there's the URL at the very top. 
The presentation tonight and uh, the handout uh, will be in our members only sections uh, of our website. And this is, it'll be under presenters as shown by the arrow. Ontario Ancestors uh, monthly webinar is Thursday, this Thursday. Uh, Lindsay Winstone is a reference archivist at the Archives of Ontario, has a Master of Information degree from the University of Toronto. She's organized many family history research days at the archives. She's attended family history fairs and has provided webinars on family history topics. And we're going to hear about how to find pre-1976 wills and estate files in the court records that are held at the Archives of Ontario. Our next me meeting and the annual general meeting will be the 2nd of November and Glenn Wright will be speaking on Proudly They Served Researching Canadian Men and Women in the Second World War, 1939 to 1945. And in December, we're going to have our annual show and tell. And you can uh, take this opportunity to show a discovery, a website, a family heirloom, and tell us its story. Now we all know if someone tries to so hold something up to the uh, camera on their computer, it's really difficult to read or see. So if you'll send me your information, your photos, a PowerPoint, whatever you want me to illustrate, I will put it into a slide and then everybody will be able to see the item or the um, heirloom or the website um, while you're talking and narrating your story. And that will be much easier than trying to hold it up to a camera on a computer. Our DNA special interest group will meet October 20th. We're going to use Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams. And since we often show personal information, um, the invitation link will only go out to uh, the private group. So if you wish to join the private group, you must email me. I've got my personal email there and also Durham Chair email. And uh, the Ontario Ancestors Board is currently looking for interest in the formation of a provincial DNA SIG. So we may see something um, showing up in our um, options when we renew. I'm going to put a survey link into chat. Um, this is from the program people of Durham Region Branch and we're just looking for ideas for our 2022 lineup. And it's a very quick survey, only takes two minutes, unless you start writing a long sentence in the comment fields. Um, I've put in ideas, but you can put more ideas, things that I've missed. And, um, you know, it only takes a couple of minutes. We'd really appreciate it. I'll put that link over in the uh, chat in one minute. So uh, at this point, we have finished the official meeting, but if anyone wants to remain and uh, put a question on any topic, uh, we can certainly chat about it. Uh, maybe even something like, uh, a great find you got on Ancestry. So I've put the survey link in the chat. And if you have, um, we, we could even uh, selectively unmute people if you need to explain something a little bit 
uh, better than just typing a sentence in chat. We can do that. I do have a question from Susan. She's asking if the live transcript can be saved. And I will pass that over to Kim because I don't know if the transcript can be saved. Uh, at the moment, no, the live transcript cannot be saved. Um, we put that secure in so that, um, we, you know, for copyright reasons for the actual speaker's presentations. Um, but again, the recording is a, is going to be made available on the Durham branch website. So hopefully you guys can catch it there. Okay. And if you are on an iPad, for some reason, the handouts aren't, aren't visible in iPad and I think think the iPhones and a few other, perhaps some of the Android, send an email to me at durhamchair.ogs.on.ca and uh, to, after the meeting, please. And I will uh, send the handout to you. Okay, in the chat, Bob Bell is, uh, is stating that he talked to two, he talked two sisters into taking the ancestry DNA test. Both showed his DNA matches in the DNA section, but only one shows as a DNA match in my tree. Interesting. Have you These are half sisters, aren't they, Bob? So he's asking, how do I get the other to show? I don't know if uh, Leslie's still on uh, and, and could address that or if she's left the meeting. I don't see her, Nancy. Okay, so she has gone. So uh, Bob saying uh, the half shows as a DNA match, the other doesn't. So the other being a full sister? Yes, okay. Interesting. Um, can you get permission to be an admi administrator on her DNA kit? Because that may be the way to link her DNA onto your tree. Because I just did my own sister, uh, made me administrator on her account. And Ancestry allowed me just to click and add my family tree with her link to the DNA. Oh, good. Probably that'll be your next idea. So at this point, um, so the sister that shows is an admin, admin on your DNA account. That's interesting. Maybe she did the same thing. <laughs> okay. Does anybody else have something to put in? I don't know if you can post to everyone. Um, you, sorry, Nancy, what are you trying to do? Um, I don't know if the uh, members in the um, participant windows can see a choice for everyone. No, only co-hosts. Only the co-hosts. Okay. So, um, oh, Bob just told me the same thing. Thanks, Bob. Okay. So uh, continue to put your stuff into um, the questions co-host addressee, and I will continue to read them out. If there's, some, if there's someone who would like to unmute themselves, um, 
it, you know, either uh, Kim could do that or you could do it yourself and just pipe up. I can, uh, we can also change the chat to everybody if you want to do that. That might be a good idea. There, changed. Okay. That makes it easier for chatting uh, in the chat itself. But if, if there's someone who wants to unmute and ask a particular question, um, I'll entertain that too. If not, And oh, Anne put a question. And uh, oh, there it is. Might some of the records not indexed at Family Search be indexed on another site, for example, Ancestry.ca or a local government site? Oh, uh, very much so. Um, in fact, I have seen in some of those description pages just below the um, kind of um, description first initial description box, sometimes there is a link where you can find, um, find this record online. I think it some, says something like that. Um, and definitely Family Search has partnered with all of the big websites. And so um, for instance, the uh, Ancestry has the Ontario Vital Records um, but so does uh, so does Family Search. Different time frames, uh, but definitely uh, you can find um, the records in other spots, possibly. Okay, Anne. Anne is saying unmute is turned off. So um, if you type in that you want to talk then perhaps Kim can unmute you. I don't see anybody rushing in, so I'm just going to uh, mention. There's a, sorry, there is a couple that just unmuted, I think, Anne. Yeah, it, 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 okay. it, 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 it works, yeah, yeah. I don't have a question. I was just testing it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, not hearing anybody else, I'll just give you a little bit about the next. Um, oh, I've got to move my chat out of the way. So, uh, Glenn will be talking to us about um, Second World War men and women. It can be challenging, uh, yet rewarding experience. It was an extraordinary six years in many ways, both overseas and at home. And by researching our own personal connections to the war, we can more fully appreciate the significance that the war had in the lives of our ancestors. So he's gonna do a brief overview of the war. Then he's gonna talk about major sources of information and what we can learn from them. And uh, he's going to uh, talk about retrieving and interpreting service records. And yes, they definitely had military gobbledygook codes and uh, uh, things that you will need interpreting. Uh, gonna look at unit war diaries or operations records books. Uh, unit war diaries are usually army and operations records books are air force going to talk about war dead and about uh, essential websites, etc. It, it looks to be a fascinating presentation. Uh, don't be scared off by the fact we're going to have our annual general meeting because it's usually pretty quick. So you're all welcome to come back. We'll be putting up the information in a couple of weeks on our website and you can look for it there. So um, oh, okay. And sorry, sorry, Nancy, there was one question. Verna wanted to know, will Glenn be speaking about how to search for consci conscientious objectors? 
Oh, no, that's an interesting one. Maybe I can just send him a little email and ask him if he's got anything to say on that. Make myself a note or I will forget. Okay. Oh, I got another one now. Sorry. Teresa wants to know, do you have an Irish special interest group? Uh, the branch does not, but OGS does. And I think it's only about $5 for the year to add that in. Okay. Well, I think we've come to the end of our uh, meeting and I just want to uh, express my appreciation to those of you who hung in there. And thank you and good night. <laughs>